Hello and welcome to the series where we go back to the home clubs of England players who are playing in their first ever World Cup. And today we're at Lim RFC, which is where Alex Mitchell started his rugby career as just a five-year-old. And he even made a few appearances for the first team at just 17. Now, Alex has rocketed into the England squad after replacing injured Jack Van Portfleet, but he has nailed on that nine shirt, starting three out of the four pool games and starting today in the quarterfinals against Fiji. And we're here at the club to meet the people that inspired Alex on his rugby journey. This is It Means Everything. Hi guys, Alex Mitchell here. Hope you've been enjoying the World Cup campaign. It's been a fantastic experience for me. I started at Lim Rugby Club. I've got so many great memories there. I think I started there when I was five, six. Uh, it was a fantastic uh, time for me. So yeah, I hope you uh, enjoy the World Cup and hopefully we can do a job in the knockout stages. Cheers guys. You coached Alex from, from when he was just a little young lad running around here. What was he like back then? He was the perkiest little character you'll ever meet. He, all he wanted to do was have a rugby ball in his hands. That's what he wanted. He'd do all the training, and but that was a necessary evil for him to get on that pitch. And he was the one who always used to nag me, saying, Steve, can we have a game after training? Can we have a game after training? But he wouldn't be happy until you put that ball in his hand. That's Alex. To see him and at that level, when you've got memories of him, it, it gets you here. It really does. I can remember the first game that uh, Alex played for Lim uh, as an under seven. It three stone wet through, tag belt dragging on the floor. The ball looked massive in his hands. And, and that day, I think he got five or six tries. He was just like a bar of soap. So he had this great instinct for the game. Uh, I think that comes with having two, two elder brothers and coming from a sports mad family. And, and I was fortunate enough also to see Alex's last game in a Lim shirt. Uh, we played in something called the Cock of the North final, which was the best under 18s team in the, on the west of the Pennines versus the best under 18s team in the, in the east of the Pennines. Uh, we played Wolfdale away. Uh, by half time, we were 40 points to the good, and I think Alex has scored or had a hand in every try. Alex was one of them that we just wanted to play at least one game for us because we knew he was always on a trajectory which was probably going to bypass, bypass Lim. And he played um, the last game of the season on the pitch down, down there. <laughs> he stole the show. If you ask the team we play against, Billingham, they have some pretty bad memories of it, to be honest. Uh, it was a great game, it was a really good end to the season. And, he scored a bit of a wonder try to, to cap it off. Unfortunately, uh, or you know, for us, we never got to experience him in a limb shirt again, but that's that's not a bad thing, he's gone on to, to do what he's doing. Well, the minis have just finished training. Tell us a bit about the minis programme that you've got here at Lim Rugby Club. Yeah, so uh, we've got a really, really healthy programme here at Lim. So um, we actually have around 450 kids in all in the minis and juniors. Uh, in terms of that, we start at under five. In fact, some of them are registered as young as three. We encourage them to come across. Uh, we have around 30, 35 kids per age group. Uh, we have an amazing volunteer force of 100 parent coaches that have done all their badges and, and supported by the RFU. So yeah, it's very, very healthy here on a Sunday morning, it's fantastic. Through a, through a charitable donation, we actually run an academy for all of our Colts and under 16s. So they, we, we put a lot of effort into making sure that those guys get trained by first team players, ex first team players and involved with the first team so that they can see a pathway and then if you talk to a number of them they, they'll say actually one of their desires is actually just to come play at Lim and that's really nice to see as well so yeah, it's fantastic. Everyone that's a part of this club you know down to the coaches to the players and parents you know at the youngest level right to the senior team they're all connected we all know why we want to be here and we all know what it means to play for Lim and be a part of this club. It's just it's a lovely place to be obviously and I just love playing it and it's really enjoyable. It's a really good atmosphere to be playing in and training in and we're all basically just one team. Let's first talk about the first team and that promotion winning yep. moment from, from last yep. season. Talk me through that and the build up to it as well. Great scenes up at the club, first promotion in uh, 10, 11, 11 seasons so uh, yeah it was a really good day, it was, um, it was pretty special. It is building and we want to kind of be that hub for the hub for the village get more people down here supporting on a Saturday, which we've seen a massive increase over the last, you know, the home games this season. So it does feel like we're on the uh, on the right track with that, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Well, this club has a rich history. It was formed in the 1960s, but there are reports of rugby being played here as far back as the 1870s. 
but this club isn't one to stay in the past. It's very much looking forward to creating a multi-sport facility for the community, but of course keeping rugby at its heart. Big plans take a long time to come, come together. Um, you know, we, we're kind of about step three in a six step um, uh, programme. Obviously you've seen the, they've got the AGP here. Uh, we've got the new tennis courts over there. Uh, we are, we've got planning permission to do some, uh, some, build some residential houses here uh, and that will hopefully pay for the new, the new clubhouse. I mean, the clubhouse we've got is fantastic. It's really, it's really old, got loads of character, but it's just not big enough. And, you know, if we want to do anything with it, it's just really, really difficult. So uh, we will make sure we maintain the character of the clubhouse we've built over many, many years uh, in what we're going to build in the future. But it, it'll probably be another four or five years away, but you have got to play the long game, I guess. Yeah, we're, we're certainly determined to, you know, to, to build on what we've got and, uh, and, and make sure we've got an enduring legacy here. So it started off as a kitchen revamp and we've ended up with planning permission for 22,000 square feet, clubhouse, an AGP, four tennis courts and planning permission for 19 houses. The view of the club, and particularly me, is that we're only going to get one go at this and we can't, we can't afford to get it wrong. And, and you must love it. You must, you know, have that real passion for this rugby club to be so involved and to have stuck around for all those years, but yeah. also now taken on this kind of leadership executive chairman position. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I think I take it, you know, it's a, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to be able to uh, to work with, with Lim, with the club, and take it to that next stage, you know, and hopefully before I uh, pack in, we'll have something which will keep the club sustainable for the next hundred years you know in terms of a new facility we've obviously got the pitches we've got the tennis courts we've got the hockey we've got squash courts and hopefully you know we'll go from strength to strength this pitch that we're on that uh, the rfu provided it, it has made an enormous difference just to the middies and juniors so even on days I mean, we're a glorious day today but uh, in days when it's it's howling and rainy we've still been able to keep all of the matches ongoing and staggering times and things like that using this pitch has been fantastic three former captains so that's pretty impressive isn't it and i know you guys have been involved in the club for a long time but but what keeps you coming back to this club on, on a beautiful sunday like this it's hard to not see why it's a special place for everyone here it's all very emotional for all of us because we love it and it's in it's part of our our life, you know, our, and we've, I say 90% of our friends are from here. It's it's one of those places that you just, uh, it's magnetic, you just yeah, keep coming it back is. to it. You do, yeah. it's friends, isn't it? It's yeah. people you've known all your life, you've got shared memories, it's just, it, it's it's just a big friendship group. It is. I mean, and, and the whole place is run by volunteers, yeah. I mean, there's so many people at different oh, levels that put their time in. It's the uh, camaraderie, it, on doubt. It, it's the, the friendliness of everybody involved. Uh, and the fact that everybody here is just up for uh, up for um, enjoyment and uh, having fun. I mean, that's part of what engages all the minis and juniors. It's, it's having fun, being with their mates, and that's what it's like for us as, as you know, it's part of our social life. It's part of our life, really. So yeah, absolutely. Friendship. Everyone's friends here, and it, it's a community club. But we're one big family. We're just one big family. In my will, this is where my ashes are going to end up. So that's how special it is to me. Well, England have booked themselves a spot in the semi-final of the Rugby World Cup with a win over Fiji. For here at Lim RFC, exciting times ahead as they continue to keep rugby very much at the heart of everything they do, but diversify to create a sustainable future. For Lim RFC and everybody involved here, it really does mean everything.